Greetings, Professor Nalepa here with Dubspot.com. In this week's Ableton Live tutorial, we're going to take a look at the built-in audio effect of beat repeat, show you some tips and tricks for using it both in the studio and for live performance. For this example, we're going to use a simple loop from an old Roland CR78 drum machine, basic kick hat, snare hat, kick hat, snare hat, one bar loop. All right, Hall and Oates coming to mind right about now. So I'm going to roll over here. Just hold my mouse down on the beat repeat, drag it, drop it right on this audio track, and it adds it as an insert effect. And you can see down here, there's a number of knobs and buttons that impact how the beat repeat is going to uh, affect your audio. If you're not sure what each thing does, I highly recommend for those of you that are brand new, using this info view. Uh, you can show or hide the info view over there for more room, but basically, you roll your mouse over a parameter, it tells you exactly what it does. So the interval is essentially how often the beat repeat is going to capture new material and begin repeating it. The grid has to do with what size of a slice that repeat is going to be. So if it's set to 16th note, every one bar it's going to repeat a 16th note. Okay? So what I like to use beat repeat for, I like to use it in the studio for giving some variety and and fills for my drum pattern so I'll go through and maybe make a nice drum pattern using either the impulse or the drum rack or bring in some loops and then take the the drums and run them through the beat repeat and re-record it as an audio file with the variation here turned up so the variation is adds a randomness to the grid size alright so if I turn this all the way up it's gonna be completely random so if we listen Okay, it's it's a different grid size each time. Sometimes you know it's random. Sometimes it repeats. There's no controlling it because it's random. So what I like to do is go through and create a new audio track, and then on this audio track, I'm going to just choose the audio from either the track where the drum and the beat repeat are happening, or you can also choose resampling, uh, if that's the only thing going. If you have a bunch of stuff in your session, then you would want to solo the particular track that you want to resample record enable this and then when I hit one of these circles here in these cells it's gonna start recording so now what's happening is if I look here you can see as the beat repeat is freaking out this drum loop everything's getting recorded as a new audio clip here that I can then go through in mine and find the part that I really like so I'm gonna go back here and go and look at my beat repeat and I'm going to switch the output mode from mix which basically the mix mode blends the original signal into repetitions and I'm going to switch it to insert mode which mutes the original signal when the repetitions are playing okay gate mode would be if you've got it loaded up on a return track as a send effect and you only hear the repetition so for this I'm going to turn the decay the volume decay up a little bit so now what happens is you can see here in the in the visual representation every repetition is gonna get decrease in value so this actually gives you like a nice falling away fill type of situation right? you can also turn on the no triplets in which case it won't ever use the 12th 6th 3rd 24th note sizes it'll just stick to more regular 16th note 8th note quarter note half so basically no triplets as it says alright so I'm gonna go through and leave that off and see what's going on here and basically it's just recording a bunch of variations of re repetitions on this loop so this is a very basic pattern that I have to begin with if you have something more interesting with different sounds other than just a kick hat and a snare you actually can get some really cool stuff when you use this this trick so now that I've done that I'm gonna just hit uh, the spacebar to stop it and I'm gonna copy this loop here and paste it here and I'm gonna copy the recorded part and paste it here into the arrangement as well so now I'm gonna go through and listen to some of the repetitions that I recorded so now you can see this little red lights on this is the back to the arrangement this used to be the first question Ableton would ask you if you wanted to get a job with them was what does this mean because if you understand it it means you pretty much have a good understanding of live just turn that off it means you're gonna hear what's actually in the arrangement view As soon as you queue up a clip here in the session view that little light goes on so if you are trying to work with what's in the arrangement view 
Just make sure that that little red light is off. All right, so let's listen through and find a good part where we get a nice, uh, a nice little fill. It's a little too much. Let's try this one. This looks nice. Okay, that was cool. All right, so I'm gonna grab that guy, and maybe I'll just grab this bar, and I'm just gonna hit Command X to cut. Remember, all the shortcuts are there. I'm just gonna get rid of everything else and I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the session here and maybe I'll add that here. So let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so now I've got something that's a lot more interesting than just that same pattern and I'll highlight both of them and if you hit Command D a couple times, boom, now you've got you've got a new pattern. You can just duplicate it out. Then maybe you actually would go back in here and, and, and find some other type of section, maybe some other fills, other variations that you like, and use that to, to build some variety into your drum arrangement. So that's a great way to use the beat repeat in the studio. This works really well with vocals, with synths. If you've got some synth line that you've made, you go through and apply the beat repeat to it and, and experiment. You can get some really cool stuff happening with that. All right, let's talk about using beat repeat in a live performance situation. So I'm going to go back here and turn the beat repeat on. And then I have an audio uh, clip here. It's a song that I've been working on. I'm just going to go here and I'm going to rename this the cell here in the master column 70 BPMs. And notice it turns it orange. So now if I click this, basically it changed the tempo to 70 and it triggered the clip. So I'm going to turn off the beat repeat's chance all the way down to zero. Okay. So with the chance all the way at zero, we're actually not going to hear any repetitions at all. all right? And then I'm going to use my MIDI mapping function, and I'm going to either hit Command M or click on the MIDI, and I'm going to map a key to turn the repeat button on. Okay? And then I'm also going to map a knob to the pitch decay. All right? So that I get out of the map mode, and now when I go through and move those those knobs, you can see it changing. But when I turn that repeat on, you can get some really cool live effects where you... All right, so the beat repeat only is gonna come on when you turn that repeat button on. All right, and maybe you turn the decay so it's actually not decaying at all. all right, you obviously want to use this uh, with some discretion. You can very easily overdo it. Um, but you can also go through and do a MIDI mapping where you uh, map the grid size to another control. So if I move this fader, um, and you can adjust here the minimum and the maximum value. So maybe that's a little bit much. So let's just do 132nd, and on the high end we'll do like a quarter note. We'll get out of here, and then I'll turn this back on. And now you can see when I move this knob here. So maybe I'm going to go through. All right, so that's a lot of fun for your live show. You can really spice it up. So again, map this, turn the chance all the way down. Make sure you're in uh, insert mode. Have the repeat button mapped to a button on your MIDI controller or a key on your typing keyboard. You can map the grid size here to a knob and you can match map the pitch decay to another knob. So I'm Professor Nalepa. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another tip on dubspot.com. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, 
or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.